Hi, you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tidbit for Saturday, June 23rd, and here we are still watching Invest 96L in the central Gulf of Mexico, and even on the wide satellite view, you can probably see the well-defined rotation that is taking place as the low center develops. You can see uh, the trade winds curving northwestward into the Gulf, bringing deep moisture out of the Caribbean and converging in these convective bands to the east, aiding in development of the system. Here's the close-up view. You can see a well-defined vortex now, still sheared off to the west uh, of the convection. That's still all off to the east here due to wind shear uh, from this upper low in the northwest gulf, imparting westerly winds aloft, pushing these thunderstorms off to the east of the center. The center is also probably not the main center of the system. You can see a second vortex just now popping out of the convection to the northeast, and uh, the south-southwest motion of this swirl indicates that there's likely uh, they're likely rotating around a mean common center somewhere in the middle here, and neither swirl is actually the true center and uh, this multiple vortex this multiple vortex uh, setup is a very typical uh, structure of a larger circulation circulation trying to consolidate into a smaller one while being sheared which is typical of an early season monsoonal type development coming north uh, which is exactly what we have here. So the development progression is as it should be, uh, but it is becoming better organized. You can see the popcorn bands and nice westerly inflow on the southern side of the center. So in general, this low is consolidating, and there's a recon plane in there right now trying to determine if there are enough northerly winds on the western side to name this Debbie. It should be named Debbie later today. It certainly has the winds and the pressure for it at this time. It just needs to get the circulation well-defined enough to be named. And uh, dry air isn't really going to be a problem for this. It can sometimes be when the systems are being sheared, but if you look at all the low-level clouds and random pop-up storms in the western Gulf, the Gulf of Mexico is actually rather soupy, and uh, there's lots of low-level and mid-level moisture available, and at this time it doesn't seem like dry air will be that much of an issue for it. Right now it's the wind shear pushing the thunderstorms away. Once they wrap around, there will be plenty of moisture around to help this strengthen, so dry air likely won't be that much of an issue. Here's the water vapor imagery. You can see the upper low currently over in the northwestern Gulf of Mexico, shearing the storm from the south, uh, southwest, as we mentioned. And uh, what the models are having this do, though, is they're having the upper low move southwest towards Mexico. And in general, when you have an upper low backing southwestward in the face of a tropical low to its east, that's generally in a favorable situation, or at least an improving one, for the tropical low. The wind shear generally lessens and it generally aids upper divergence and allows ventilation of the system and uh, is generally a, an improving situation. Usually not perfect, uh, may not be great for this system in particular, but it should be improving. So I think slowly over the next couple of days wind shear will gradually relax. Uh, not all the way, there will probably still be some to deal with for quite a while, uh, but the thunderstorm should have a chance to start wrapping a little bit better around the center as time goes on as it stalls southeast of New Orleans for the next couple of days. You can also see the ridge over the central plains here and the trough digging into the northeast, which is the two features we've been talking about now for a while that are going to be dictating the eventual steering and track of this system. And this particular shortwave here is going to be moving on without having much effect on the Gulf. But there's a second one up here that you can't really see yet that's going to be coming down the ridge, deepening the trough in the eastern United States and trying to draw 96L northeast origin to Florida, which is the solution that the GFS has so adamantly been advertising. Now, if 96L does take the GFS path into Florida, I don't think it will have the conditions necessary to strengthen into a hurricane. I think more likely a moderate, perhaps strong tropical storm with heavy rainfall being the big story will be the main impacts of this if it moves into the northeast track. Uh, wind shear will probably still be an issue for this if it does so, and conditions probably will not allow hurricane status. However, if it sits down here southeast of New Orleans for a while and then commits westward into Texas, we may be dealing with a stronger storm eventually as this upper low back to the southwest and allows upper ridging uh, to create a more conducive environment for development and at that point we could be dealing with a hurricane of some kind by the time it makes it that far west but that's still several days out and we will know more once 96L finally commits to a track uh, which is still a couple which it is still a couple days away from doing. Now, this is a buoy uh, to the east of the center here showing a lot of uh, winds gusting over tropical storm force going up a lot right now. Pressure is crashing down to uh, down to about 1,005 millibars at that point. The recon, though, has already hit the center of one of the main swirls and found a pressure of 1,002 millibars uh, with a calm wind center there. It's still investigating to see if the center is closed off enough for this to become named, and it will probably become Debbie if not at the 5 p.m. advisory, then likely later tonight at the 11 p.m. advisory, uh, but it should be Debbie pretty soon now. Here's the model track 
uh, guidance and uh, <laughs> I heard someone yesterday describe this as like a bad hair day for the models and this is exactly what it looks like you can see they're still spread all over the place in here and still remarkably have not come to some kind of consensus even though the fork in the road is directly upon us here we're already seeing 96L stall and it's going to stall that way southeast of New Orleans for a while deciding which way to go and the models still uh, don't know the position of the ridge in the central plains and the trough coming to the northeast are so close this is such a sweet spot down here in the Gulf uh, that the models still cannot calculate which direction the storm is going to take. The GFS you can see is still going off to the east over Florida. We have the GFDL and the CMC, the Canadian, going now into uh, the central Gulf Coast, drifting to the north after several days of stalling, which is a new solution that the Canadian has adopted, abandoning its track into Texas that it had during the last couple of days. The UK Met and the HWRF are still sticking with the westward track into Texas, and so is last night's European run, which is its fourth fourth or fifth run in a row that it now takes it into southern Texas, uh, which is uh, good confidence for the track that I still have uh, that has it doing this coming south or southwest towards southern Texas or northern Mexico, which I still find to be the most likely track. The reason being, uh, one of them anyway, that uh, one of the reasons is if we look at the precipitation fields on the models for a couple of days from now, this is the UK Met, it's a little fuzzy I know, uh, but here's the low center. You can see the colors indicating precipitation. Most of the convection here is confined to the Gulf of Mexico. There's rain over Florida, uh, but there's not so much going on to the east of Florida here. Most of the convection is confined, and we see the same thing on the Japanese model. Again, the low to the west, and most of the precipitation confined to the Gulf of Mexico. But if we look at the GFS, which is the model that takes this to the east, we notice that after a couple of days, most of the precipitation gets strung out to the northeast, which with the highest values east of Florida, and most of the convection getting stripped from the circulation and uh, this is a typical bias of the GFS uh, where it tries to string out a bunch of energy to the northeast into troughs coming into the eastern seaboard which it likes to do a lot and it feeds back a little bit too much and eventually turns this into a new tropical storm and moves it northwestward while leaving a low behind in the Gulf. This solution I still find to be a little bit unrealistic and I think it is this feedback uh, that forces the GFS to move this northeast and that is why it is still all by itself showing this track solution at this point. The other models I think have a better idea, especially the fact that the circulation is very well defined now. You can see how well it's spinning and it's at a pressure that is deep enough to probably hold itself together pretty well now and I think it'll hold on to this convection to the east and won't let it escape to the northeast as the GFS shows. And again also the trough over the west coast of the US which you can't see you can't see it yet. It's coming towards the west coast of the U.S. here. The fact that it's going to be here means that the ridge, I think, will have enough presence over the central plains to not allow this trough over New England to pull this out, and I think it will stall for a little bit and then finally commit westward eventually to Texas. However, as with the last several days, I've had to say the track to the north into Louisiana or the north Gulf Coast or the track northeast into Florida can't be entirely discounted until the models finally come into a consensus that supports either either my track or some other track. Right now they're way too spread out and we need the computer support to have high confidence in our forecast. I do think it will go this way with the westward models into southern Texas and northern Mexico, but folks along the Gulf Coast from Louisiana to Florida should be very wary of this system and the fact that a landfall could still occur in their area within a few days. And again, regardless of the track, uh, there's going to be heavy rain spreading across this area anyway, so they should be wary for blustery weather and tropical storm-like conditions in some places. So overall, this is still a difficult forecasting situation. We will continue to watch 96L very closely. She should she should soon become Debbie. I'm already calling her she. She should be Debbie soon, and uh, will be causing rains again from Florida towards Louisiana for the next couple of days in the short term may impact the western part of the Gulf later in the long term if it does take that track I still think it will and we will just watch this closely to see what happens this is a very interesting situation and folks along the Gulf Coast should be aware of this storm alright that's it for today thanks for watching